So let's get started by just simply writing um, what is a basic chemical equilibrium. Come down. We are open. There are plenty of seats here. So let's say we have uh, HA and this guy is in equilibrium and obviously this is an acid. And what does an acid do? Gives off a proton, exactly. So proton. And what's left of the acid then? A minus, you're absolutely right. And we could classify this A minus as what? It would be the conjugate base, exactly. So plus base. Yeah? So this is a sort of, you see how these things fit together. And whatever we do, whenever we use this HA, whatever this HA might be, um, there will always be the same sort of ratio that will establish itself when we put this HA in water. And we can write this as the concentration of the protons times the concentration of the A minus divided by the concentration of the HA. And that is always a constant. And we said this is the Ka constant. Ka stands for constant. It's not because I can't spell. It is just simply because uh, the whole stuff was pretty much developed by uh, German chemists. And in German, you spell constant with a K. Sorry about that. Okay, so what does this Ka actually tell us? And I would like to relate this almost a little bit to... Oh, sorry, I thought uh, uh, I have done something and <laughs> you're going to attack me or so. <laughs> what does this Ka actually tell us. Now, this Ka, I would like to relate this, or this, this whole scenario here, I would like to relate this to relationship. Let's say we have, just make something up, we have 100 couples. Okay, and of course, life is never easy, and couples break up. So what we would get is something along the line of the singles. And of course, the singles then find together, not necessarily, again, with uh, the guy with the person they were married to, or engaged, or whatever. And I, 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 don't want to, I don't want to give the impression that these couples all have to be uh, heterosexual. They can be what, you know, whatever they want. That's, you know, I just want to make sure that uh, I fulfill the um, equality, diversity, and inclusivity agenda of the university. Uh, so I need to say that. Um, so there's no prejudice. It just makes it easier to track the, the, the individuals here. Okay, so we can even write something along the line of an equilibrium constant here. So we can write K... Couple equals number of females times the number of males divided by the number of 
couples, if you like. And that's constant. Now, let's for a moment envisage that this is a sort of a very, how shall I say, um, promiscuous uh, population here. <coughs> yeah? With lots of breakups and, uh, you know, lots of different things going on. So let's say we have 100 couples and they decide it's no good staying together. So for example, they easily split up. We have 99 females. How many males then do we have? Ninety-nine males, yes. I was just thinking, why do we have only one male? <laughs> <laughs> that poor sod. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he definitely needs Viagra. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we would assume we have 99 females, 99 males. How many couples have we got left then? One couple. So we have 99 times 99 <coughs> divided by 1. Is that right for our Ka? Yeah? That makes sense? What does, what does this Ka tell us then? What, what, what is it numerically? Is it large? Is it small? It's pretty large, isn't it? It is uh, 100 squared, basically. 100 times 100 is 10,000 divided by 1. Roughly, so it's, uh, it's uh, around 10,000 or so. Am I right or am I right? Yeah. So Ka is pretty large. Yeah? Now, let's think for a moment that uh, this is perhaps an older generation. We still have 100 couples. Male and female, but they don't, you know, they are sort of my generation. And it's the breakup rate is very small. So how can we write that in terms of breakup? Ka equals 1 times 1 divided by how many couples are left? 99, yeah, exactly. So this is, um, what does that give us? 1 divided by 100 is roughly 0 0.01. Yeah? So this Ka here and here, this gives us the breakup rate how easy these couples break up. Now when I say that with Ka, obviously I refer to an acid and a base, not just coupled, couple. Uh, so a high Ka, high Ka indicates Big breakup. Big breakup rate. <coughs> yeah. Whereas low peak, low Ka indicates low breakup rate. Oh, he's running away. <laughs> So that is really the intuition behind this Ka thing. And I showed you the other day that Ka and this Pka are related to each other. 
and they are inversely re related. So pKa equals negative log of Ka. Or in other words, if Ka is really large, and I symbolize it uh, like that, then the consequence is that pKa is small. And the other way around. Ka is very small, therefore pKa is rather large. Or, in other words, if Ka is large, then our breakup rate is large, and the pKa is small. Breakup rate high, pKa low. That's the whole, how shall I say, that's the whole secret of this Ka and pKa. So if I give you, let's say, I give you a Ka, Ka1, Ka2, 1 is 100, and 1 is, and, and the second one is 1, where's the breakup rate higher? Of course, it is in 1, yeah? Which one has the lower pKa? One, exactly, because Ka is high. Ka is high, pKa is low. Yeah? So here, lower pKa. Absolutely right. And... <coughs> we can relate this again to acids. Again with the acid we have to break up from the acid into the protons. So this means a lower pKa means higher breakup, higher dissociation. So therefore, bless you, so therefore we would have here a stronger acid. Lower pKa means stronger acid. Higher pKa means weaker acid. Make sense? Fantastic. Now, let's have a look at what would happen if we've got an acid... H plus plus A minus. And we can write this again in our equilibrium, but I want to write it slightly different. I want to write it as Ka equals proton concentration times base concentration over the acid concentration. And I write this also as H plus times base over acid. Ka is a constant. It's always a constant. Yeah? <coughs> what does this equation actually tell us? <coughs> What does that say in words? First of all, it tells us something about the base and acid ratio, doesn't it? There is a base and acid ratio, this here. And it tells us something about the proton concentrations. Oh, 
thought she was screaming in pain. Um, it tells us that the base acid ratio depends on the proton concentration. And this gives us a constant here. So, base to acid ratio depends on proton concentration. So far, so good, but what on earth is that supposed to mean? Let's have a quick look at our equation again. HA. I probably should have a stamp for something like that. Gives us a minus plus protons. Now, what would happen, just think for a moment, what would happen if I increased the proton concentration, if I add more protons? What would happen? Did you hear that? Probably not. Anton, you are absolutely right. Loud. Well, since you're introducing something on the right-hand side of the concentration, the equilibrium will try to smooth that out by increasing the favor of the acid side, which is on the left oh, side. I should go that way, yes. Absolutely, you are absolutely right. The, <coughs> by increasing the proton concentration, the equilibrium wants to get away from this pressure and therefore, it would go onto that side here. So I draw it like that. Yeah? So we would create more HA. How would our Ka respond? <coughs> Let's write that down, the Ka again. Ka equals proton concentration times A minus divided by HA. So, we said we increase this guy here. This goes up. What would happen? What? Anton said Ka stays the same. Uh, the Ka will decrease. The Ka will decrease. Okay. So who is right? <coughs> who is right? I think it stays the same. It stays the same. What else? Does it stay the same? Change the initial uh, quantities of the of the uh, of the protons, then the AKA remains the same. But you introduce protons into the system, so see it's the limit. Okay, the okay. Ah, I see where you're coming from. So what? That's okay. Okay, okay, okay. Democratic vote. Yeah, democratic vote. Who thinks KA stays the same? Hands up. Who thinks Ka decreases? Hands up. Okay. Who thinks Ka increases? Hands up. Oh, we have no increases. Who thinks I don't give a flying care? <laughs> Any hands here? No, usually there are people who show hands. Oh, well, that's interesting. That's interesting. Okay. Johannes said we are increasing protons in the system. 
We add <laughs> protons to the system. But it doesn't really matter whether we add them or not. As long as the, the volume doesn't change too much, it's just simply we increase this guy here. And Anton was absolutely right. Ka, uh, tell me again, what does K stand for? Constant. It's a constant. Ah, a constant has the ability to stay constant. Hey, that's you know, it says it, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Yeah, it stays constant. This stays the same. But wait a moment, we have a conceptual problem here, don't we? If this guy, if this Ka stays the same, and this guy here goes up, what is the, what is the consequence? So, okay, you say here the Ha, this goes down. It increases. It increases, sorry, yeah. So this increases. Okay, this increases. Okay. What happens to the A minus? What happens to that? We said, we said, just to give you an the, the, again, the intuition and to, to follow your sort of your thinking, yes? If we add protons, then we move to that side. So HA increases. Yeah? Makes sense. So therefore, HA increases down here. What happens to the A minus? What happens to that? What, what, what do you reckon? People go like, yeah? Uh, we have to balance the equation once again, so A minus will increase. A minus will increase. <coughs> A minus increases. Decreases. Oh, for heaven's sake, please make up your mind, right? This is, this is utterly confusing for me. So, he says it Increases, she says, decreases. What's 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 true? <coughs> I don't know. So what, what what happens? What happens? Increase or decrease? Decrease. Actually, why would it decrease? Ah, it reacts with the H plus. Yes? The A minus reacts with the H plus to form the HA. So therefore, the A minus would decrease. I'm terribly sorry to disappoint you, but, you know, I, I suppose you will live. Yeah? So do you see what, what's going on here? Now... When I change the proton concentration, it has an effect on the base to acid ratio, doesn't it? Because it wants to stay the same with the constant. So, changing proton concentration. will change base to acid <coughs> base to acid ratio okay make sense so far hey cool like that okay here's another one for you just intuition follow your intuition i have my acid which gives a proton and a minus. 
And now I add OH minus to that. What is going to happen? I go a little bit up here now so that I don't, don't hear always the same people. What will happen if I add OH minus? Uh huh. It reacts with the O A uh, with the H plus. What happens? What do I get? Boa. Yeah. Loud. What happens? H A then dissociates more. Uh huh. The H A dissociates more. Is that right? Why? Aha, uh -huh. yes, yes. It balances out the lack of H+. Plus. Yeah? So the equilibrium goes in that direction. Yeah? Now let's write this again as our Ka. Ka equals H plus times A minus divided by HA. Yeah? Now I reduce H plus. What happens to Ka? What happens to Ka? Stays the same. Why? Because it's a constant. Exactly. Ka stays the same. Ka always stays the same. Yeah? Ka stays the same. What changes? What do you suggest will change? If the H plus goes down, what changes? The, if, if, H, if H plus goes down, what goes up? Yeah, you said it. HA. What does HA do? Sorry? It does see dissociates. So HA up or down? Up or down? Down. Who thinks it's down? Yeah? Who thinks it's up? No? No up? No? Okay. Okay. It goes down. What happens to A minus? Up or down? Or who cares? Up. Aha! Uh -huh. So you see, again, changing the proton concentration has an effect on the base to acid ratio. Yeah? Do you get that? Right. Now let's do something quite funny with that. So we know that the proton concentration, proton concentration, in a way, determines determines the base to acid ratio. If I increase the proton concentration, then the base to acid ratio changes. If I decrease the proton concentration, the <coughs> acid to base or base to acid ratio changes. Yeah? So obviously, I can turn that also around, can't I? If I change the base to acid ratio, will the pH change? Oh, sorry, will the proton concentration change? Well, it's a little bit like if I stand close to you, 
you are also close to me, right? So <laughs> that's why I can't turn these statements around. If pH changes base to acid ratio, then the base to acid ratio also <coughs> determines the proton concentration. I should say here proton concentration because we haven't done the pH yet. <coughs> so if the proton concentration changes the base to acid ratio, the inverse is true as well. The base to acid ratio determines the proton concentration. Are we okay with that, with that statement? How? Not how we are okay with that statement, but how does it influence these things? Let's see how, this P, how the proton concentration is affected by the base to acid ratio. Let's say we have Ka equals proton concentration times base to acid ratio. That's what we said earlier. Now I want to find out how the pH is actually affected by that. <clears throat> how the proton concentration is actually affected by that. So what I can do is I can convert my proton concentration into a pH. Can you remember how you convert proton concentration into pH? Yes? Minus log. So minus log of the proton concentration gives you the pH. How do you convert the pH into proton concentration? <coughs> 10 to the power of? Minus. Yes. So 10 to the power of minus. I write it like that. So what I can do now is I just simply get everything with H plus on one side and everything that's not H plus on the other side of this equation. So this would give me, where am I? This would give me H plus <coughs> equals Ka times, and I have to bring that to that side, so it would be times acid <coughs> over base. Have I done that right? So I bring this, I multiply by acid and divide by base, then I have it on that side. So it would get H plus equals Ka times acid <coughs> over base. So it's the acid-base or base-acid ratio. It's, you know, tomatoes, tomatoes, doesn't matter which, well, it does matter which way around, but, uh, you know. Okay, so let me quickly write this down again. H plus equals Ka times acid over base. So now I want to convert that into a pH. pH. And to do that, I need to do it minus log. But if I do that with one side of the equation, I also have to do it with the other side of the equation, don't I? So I have to do that with this one, minus log. And I have to do that with this one here as well, minus log. What do I get if I do that? 
I get, obviously, with the H plus, I get pH. Yeah? What do I get if I do minus log Ka? What? PKA. Oh, yeah. How cool is that? PKA. Hey, that's something that's familiar now. Yeah? And what do I do with the rest? Well, I have minus log of the ratio of the acid versus the base ratio. And, of course, we are always dealing with concentrations. So we just can put that in here, unless I've got the ratio given. Yeah? pH equals pKa minus log acid to base. This tells us how the acid-base ratio <coughs> excuse me, actually affects the proton concentration, affects the pH. Or the other way around, how the pH affects the proton concentration. No, sorry, there was too many protons. How the proton concentration from the pH affects the acid to base ratio. Yeah? This is actually probably the most complicated equation that I want you to remember for the rest of your life. This thing here even has a special name. <coughs> Bless you. It is the famous... Yes, loud! henderson hasselbalch equation. henderson hasselbalch equation. And you can remember this very easily. By the way, by the way, you do not need to know how I got to this here, although it's fairly simple. What you need to know is this, what's in the, in the little box. And what you will find is that there are usually two different ways to write that which are exactly the same. So you can write it as pH equals pKa minus log acid to base. Or, following the rules of logarithms, you can do something with it. You can also write it as pH equals pKa plus log base to acid. So you just turn it around, acid base or base to acid, but it will change this sign here. Now, here's a nice mnemonic for you to remember which way this, this goes. You can say, for example, Peter Klapper, PK, is a positive bastard. Yeah? PKA equals positive, is equals, PH equals PKA plus, that's the positive, base over acid, bastard. I hope you won't forget that in a hurry. Right? Does that make sense? Are you happy with that? In this case, I suggest that we digest that a little bit. You go home. And on Thursday, you're not going home. We've got another lecture. Oh, bugger it. Um, anyway, you don't go home. 
And on Thursday, we do some stuff with that. Okay? By the way, I don't have any sign-in sheets for Thursday. Can I have the sign-in sheets back, please? And has everybody signed in? Thank you very much, and I see you on Thursday, or not. <laughs>